Amen. The peace of Christ, the dawn of the new day, be with you now. And also with you. Will you greet those around you with this great news? It is the dawn of a new day, so be it. All who are able, please rise and greet those around you. stand here awkward.
trust you when you call our name where you need us we follow the way raise your hands all you nations shout to god all creations how awesome is the lord most high we will praise you together for now and forever how awesome is the lord most high hallelujah hallelujah how awesome is the lord most high hallelujah hallelujah how awesome is the lord most high raise your hands all you nations shout to god all creations how awesome is the lord most high we will praise you together for now Don't go anywhere. <laughs> At this time, I want to invite all of the other younger friends to come up and join Ms. Darla for children. You're not going to have children's time. You're going to go to children's church. But before you go, you guys got your pipes all warmed up. We have to sing, right? The groaning. The groaning. Gosh, to be young again, right? Good morning, everyone. We start at worship today with this summary. Today, along with the awestruck, awestruck worshiping community in the scripture story, we experience the power of Jesus to call out unclean spirits, those things that rage within us, limiting our ability to love and grow. We can lean on the authority of Jesus in our lives to conquer and be free to move beyond our boundaries. Today's reading is from Mark chapter 1, verses 21 through 28. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then, in their synagogue, 
a man with an unclean spirit, and, cl- and cried out, What have you done? What have. Let me try that again. What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and, and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one, th- one, one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The sense of reading for today. Good morning. May my thoughts and words align with God's message and unconditional love for us today. Amen. Well, I sure picked the short straw in the preaching calendar today with the story of Jesus exercising a demon in the synagogue. Pastor Chris even asked me if I was ready to focus on the demonic theme, but of course I said sure, which is usually my response to anything that pastors Chris and Kaylee ask of me. But I'm going to take the pressure off of me for a moment and start by asking you this question. Do you believe in demons? I'll give you a bit of a break. I'm not talking about the demons of horror films. Those I truly believe are made up in the imagination of the artists. I'm talking about possession of the spirit, like the man in today's gospel reading. A man with an unclean spirit cried out and Jesus rebuked him saying, be quiet and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying with a loud voice came out of him. On the surface, of course, we see yet another demonstration of Jesus' faith and power, the ability to heal, to heal even those who have fallen between the cracks of society. Although Mark did not use the Greek word for healing in this narrative. But does this story have any relevance for us today, whether or not you buy into demons? I think it does. What are demons? There's a lot of mythology in the Bible, especially the Old Testament. People needed a way to explain the irrational, a way to make sense of their worlds. Think about the Roman and Greek gods and goddesses, one for each emotion, each plague in the world, each success and failure. People needed to make sense of their complicated and unexplainable world, and demons fit the bill. We have a lot of terms that we still use today that give power to those demons. The devil made me do it. I don't know what came over me. Speak of the devil. Speed demon, the devil will get his due, you get the picture. And then we often refer to our demons as things that plague us, perhaps faults or regrets we carry, or personality traits that we just don't love or accept about ourselves. But what were the demons of biblical times? It's important to note here that the demon in this man was the first to identify and call out Jesus by name, and his mission on earth. He had a purpose, a God-given purpose. But this poor guy in Capernaum sure didn't seem to be suffering from a faulty personality trait. Often in the Gospels, the words for casting out demons and healings are used side by side or interchangeably, leading to the possibility that the afflicted persons were suffering from, at the time, incurable diseases or mental illnesses. What if unclean spirit simply meant one who has been overcome by fear, anger, and hatred? In other words, what the Bible folk would have called sinful. Perhaps this man was raging against the machine, overcome by his emotions, and unable to find solace or an outlet or even a compassionate ear. I do have a confession to make. I don't believe in hell or the devil or demonic possessions. I once had a spiritual friend who is quite the influencer 
say to me, I've seen demons, I've seen them at work, and if you don't believe in them, then you're just being naive. I believe I have a choice, and I choose not to focus on those energies of fear. I think there are enough poor choices that humans make on this earth that we don't need additional unseen bad guys to put energy into. When we see the devil at work, I believe it is all attributed to humans reacting with fear. Fear of losing power or control, fear of embarrassment, fear of losing privilege. Of course, there are acts that we deem incomprehensible, simply unfathomable that a human being could commit, and you know what those are. I don't need to say them here but they're easy to attribute to demons, but are simply mental illness or misplaced anger or vengeful retribution or unresolved trauma converting fear into violence. So how do we take this gospel message, a bizarre story of demon exorcism, and apply it to our lives? How do we make it relevant? After all, Jesus' messages are timeless, and I believe it is our job to continue looking for ways to evolve in his messages. Let's examine that idea of fear being seen as a demon, causing us to lash out, hoard, segregate, judge, comment, or worse, participate in the annexation of a person or a group of people. Now, perhaps this isn't you, per se, but I bet you can name a family member or someone in your circle or an influencer who succumbs to these fears or behaviors. These are the things that limit our ability to love and grow. And that's what Jesus is demonstrating in this gospel. Uninhibited faith in miracles, amazement, and freedom from fear and boundaries. As Amy Jill Levine describes in her book, The Gospel of Mark, that the adult faith formation class is studying, greed prompts more greed. So what can be done to break the system? Desire for power prompts the desire for more power. So what can be done to stop the drive? Bringing sinners to repentance is more likely to occur with care than with condemnation. Helping people to learn to help others is a better way of helping them to themselves out of the practices of sin and into the practices of righteousness. Now, I'm not all for identifying who's a sinner and declaring they need repentance because quite frankly we all do and don't simultaneously, but I do support the notion of care over condemnation and helping others to help themselves. And in order to do that, we have to be self-aware. Aware of where and when and who we condemn and why. Aware of the boundaries we have set up against them and how to live our lives with acceptance, grace, and unconditional love. I posed this question to the faith formation class I led recently. What if today someone walked into worship wearing just a bathing suit? Would your judgment antenna go up? Sure it would. We are wired to make an observation and then a decision about what we see. That's our survival mechanism, and once upon a time, it kept us from being eaten by the saber-toothed tigers. Albeit this is a far-fetched scenario, I would encourage you to look at all of these judgment situations we encounter on a daily basis and determine if there is a purpose in you being at that exact time and place. Is there some action you should take? Is there a message that you need to hear or pass on to family or friends? Is there a need presenting itself directly to you? Are you being called to be that helper, that person who puts care over condemnation? Look for the Holy Spirit at work. Our demons can paralyze us from moving forward. It can help us doubt ourselves, our sanity, our worth, our purpose, our possibilities. Is this happening to you? Are you being held back by the demon of fear? Let's free ourselves today. Let's take a deep breath 
and imagine ourselves there with Jesus as he rebuked that demon. As he says, be quiet and come out of him. Think about ways we as a church and you as an individual can replace boundaries with openness and kindness, with welcome and acceptance. Remember, all of us, we are just doing the best we can. We all have our demons, so to speak, the things that weigh us down and prevent us from being truly free and joyful. Think about the children in your life their unbridled joy at even the smallest things. I believe that's what Jesus was trying to deliver to the people that witnessed his miracles of casting out demons. Amazement, joy, companionship in the witness, hope, faith, and freedom from fear. I mean, anything is now possible. The almighty demons have been cast out. There is plenty for all. We don't need to hold hands with our demons any longer. Amen. Your, your bulletins are filled with plenty of opportunities on how you can serve and learn here at Union. See all the activities for our children, for our youth, and for our adults. Thank you to our 22 soup makers who helped make Best in Bowl last Sunday such a huge success. Our winners were Italian Wedding Soup by Vicki Sorg, Capusta Soup by Don Penrod, Chicken Corn Rice Soup by Carol James, and Cheddar Ham Chowder by Deb DeLucio. And because of all of the support that you all gave us, we were able to raise $531 for our Feed My Serving Children event. And a huge shout out to the youth that helped serve and set up and make sure that all of the soup stayed simmering during worship last week and made everything go so greatly. I could, we could not have done it without of all of you. Speaking of Feed My Starving Children, you can now sign up to um, start volunteering for the event, which will um, be March 8th through March 10th. You can go online. There is a link in your bulletin. Or you can see one of our Feed My Starving Children team members in the lobby after work after worship and we need about 80 volunteers per shift so please check out the schedule and see what fits best and come join us for that wonderful event so again welcome to our scouts from troop and pack 57 uh, gavin is here to share some information Good morning, everyone. My name is Gavin Phillips. I am a Tenderfoot Scout in Troop 57. I really like Scouts. We go on all kinds of camping trips. We get to go to different events through the year, such as like we do different camping trips. Sometimes we will go to like larger group trips, which where we will sometimes compete against other troops such as uh, the Klondike Derby, which is a winter camping trip where we take a sled with us and then do like first aid, fire building, other activities like that. My favorite part about Scouts is um, summer camp. It is a week-long event around 4th of July and where we get to do different merit badges, such as one of my favorites was motorboating at Camp Rodney, which is by the Chesapeake. We got to drive motorboats, learn about all the different safety stuff. And another one of my favorites is canoeing, where we got to learn how to do some of the more advanced strokes to move left and right, and also how if you accidentally flip your canoe, how you can flip it back and get back into it. If any of you are, instru are interested in scouting or know someone who is, you can, we have meetings every week on Tuesday. For more information, you can contact us at nefstroop57 at gmail.com. Hello, my name is James Barbara Allen, and I have been a scout for about six years. 
some of my favorite things about scouting are uh, spending time with my fellow scouts and learning about them, and uh, some other things as uh, adventure and learning about the wilderness and how to be uh, better in the future. Thank you. Thanks. So two of the leaders are here today, Jeff Phillips and Greg Kuklinski. So we want to thank them and the parents and um, and all the people who support the troop in the pack and um, you know continue to do that. Can, if, again, if, like Gavin said, if you want more information, please contact them or contact the office. But thank you for all that you do for our families and our kids. So let's give them some support. Uh, some other information to share with you. The flowers up front here are in memory of Janet Hoffman, who passed away this week. Uh, services were on Wednesday. Please keep Curtis and their family in your prayers. Other events coming up include uh, God First returns this week on Wednesday night. Come out for supper, uh, some small group opportunities for kids and adults, and then a closing worship time. Uh, Super Bowl tailgate lunch is coming up, and... Before we know it, Shrove Tuesday, this might be the earliest I think Lent can happen this year, but Shrove Tuesday uh, is on the 13th, and we, you don't need to buy a ticket, but if you could stop and get a ticket if you're planning to come in the lobby, they have tickets for you after worship, and that will help the committee do some planning. There's takeout available too. All of that information is in your bulletin. And then Ash Wednesday will be on the 14th, also Valentine's Day. I'm thinking that's a perfect way to have Valentine's Day is the beginning of Lent. Uh, but we will, um, this has not been advertised, I just kind of decided it today, didn't even tell them until 8 o'clock church, uh, but I'll be here at noon on Ash Wednesday for an hour in the sanctuary if you want to receive ashes uh, from 12 to 1, and then we have worship on Ash Wednesday. That has been advertised at 7 o'clock uh, with communion. Faith on Tap is returning, the date's in your bulletin, and then on February 24th, we'll be having our first labyrinth retreat. The church purchased a canvas labyrinth that f kind of fills all of Memorial Hall. And if you've ever, a labyrinth is a little bit different than a maze, you, aren't, you don't get lost. There's only one way to go, and you always end up in the center, and the spiritual piece to that is that that's where God is. So if you want to come and walk and do meditation and prayer with us for the morning, uh, please look at those details and sign up. February is also a chance to support Blanket Sunday, which is the whole month of February. So any donations you make toward blankets will go to help those who are facing crises and disasters. Because of you, our church does change lives in all the ways that you offer yourself and offer all of the resources and uh, gifts and talents that you have. That helps to make the world a better place, and we give God thanks for you.
Please be seated. Restoring God, in you we proclaim life and liberty over everything in our lives that makes us feel trapped, guilty, or fearful. We raise our hearts in gratitude for the ways that your love softens the sharp edges of our lives and calls us into love and connection within this community. Help us to leave behind any thought patterns or behaviors that keep us from wholeness and to be a healing presence for others. For the faithful all over the world, that all who love you may be united in your mission, seeking transformation beyond our familiar ways, we sing and pray. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. For the peoples and leaders of the nations, that they may be reconciled to one another, in pursuit of your justice and peace. For all who suffer from prejudice, greed, or violence, that the heart of humanity may radiate with your tenderness. Seeking transformation beyond our limited understanding, we sing and pray. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond For all in need, because of famine, flood, or earthquake, that they may know the hope of your faithfulness through the help of others. For the land, the sea, the sky, for your whole creation, which longs for its redemption, that we may live with respect for your creation and use your gifts with reverence. Seeking transformation beyond our limited understanding, we sing and pray. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my For all who suffer the pain of sickness, loneliness, fear, or loss, that those whose names are in our hearts, in the hearts of others, or known to you alone, may receive strength and courage. We pray for those on our prayer list and for those on our hearts and minds. Seeking transformation beyond our limited understanding, we sing and pray. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. O Jesus, light of the world, be a morning star above for us, a radiance within us, and the shining brightness all around that transforms our lives in love. And we all pray and say together, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Each week we feature a poem written about going beyond the horizon, And this week, the poem is written by Lori Hirschberger. Out of my familiar, I have traveled, breaking through the membrane of fear that held me captive, compromising in the womb of safety that held me near. And I struggled to be born, to burst, to break away from ties that held me tight, to stand up, to speak out, but I could not till the physician's hand drew drew me light. So now I am born again, not once or twice, but many times, for I continue to die and be born again and again until the day I new born to heaven in my Savior's arms will lie. And so now go forth and contemplate the horizon you are called to move beyond, trusting that there is more in store for you than you can perceive or know all at once. Go forth to push the boundaries of your comfort zone and to embrace the healthy, growing pains of life, led with integrity, restored by faith, supported in love, held and healed by grace. 
Keep on, my friends, sustained by the bread of life, washed in the grace of Christ, moved beyond your wildest imaginings. Amen.